Hello everyone and welcome to Python programming practice. In this episode we are going to be doing leet code number 104, maximum depth of binary tree. This is classified as an easy problem. I'll start by reading the problem description here. Given a binary tree, find its maximum depth. The maximum depth is the number of nodes along the longest path from the root node down to the farthest leaf node. Note, a leaf is a node with no children. And then it's giving us an example. Given a binary tree of these numbers, and they have a representation of it here, so the root node is 3, it has two children, 9 and 20. The 20 node has two more children, 15 and 7. And with this, given this tree, its maximum depth is 3 because we have 3 levels here. The root node is level 1, 9 and 20 are at level 2, and 15 and 7 are at level 3. So given this binary tree here, we would return 3. So let's start by pulling over to the code editor and getting our whiteboard up here to think about how we can approach this problem. So a binary tree is a data structure where there's some root node and then the root node can have children nodes, up to two that branch off from it. And those children nodes can also have children and it can grow to basically an arbitrary depth. So this problem is to find out how deep the tree actually goes. So let's draw out a little binary tree here and think about how we could approach this problem. So for instance, this right here is an example of what could be a binary tree that we're given. It is not a balanced or full binary tree because it has this branch here that happens to go deeper and this branch here that doesn't go as deep, but this is still a binary tree that you could potentially be passed as input to this problem, so we need to be able to deal with things where the levels aren't balanced on both sides. So what exactly is the depth of a binary tree and how do we go about calculating it? Well, so when we're at the root node here, all we know is that we have one level. To find the maximum depth, we need to add to that every level below it. And we can't immediately check what that is at the root node because we have to traverse down the tree to find out what the maximum depth is. So when we're here, we can say we have depth one and then we want to add to it whatever the maximum is of the depths of the two children. So we'd want to add max depth of the two children branches here. So then we'd have to traverse into those and figure out what the maxes of those are. So we'd have to traverse to 10. When we're here, we can add one because 10 is a new level. But then we'd also have to say, all right, now what's the max depth of 10's children? Well, in this case, 10 doesn't have any children, so that doesn't add anything. And once we know that, the max depth of this branch is 1. So we'd report back up to the top that the max depth of this branch is 1. And then we'd have to traverse this side too. So we'd go down this way and say, all right, we're at 7. That's plus 1 for this level. What's the max of its two children? We'd have to traverse down and say, well, there's plus 1 here. There's plus 1 here. We have to traverse down again and eventually find out that there's nothing down there. And these numbers would have to be accumulated upwards. So that becomes 2 for that one. And this becomes then 3 for that one. And ultimately, we see the max between this branch and this branch is this side, because there's three over here, and there was only one over here. And that would come back up to the top, and three plus our original root node would be four depth for this whole tree. But how do you actually do that in code? So this sort of problem lends itself naturally to doing a recursive algorithm, something where we can drill all the way down to the bottom node and then build the results back up to the top to find what the answer is. So we'd start at the root node and say we're at level one, but then to figure out what the max of the two children are, well, it's, we can't do that just by looking at the child. We have to traverse all the way down to whatever the bottom of that child is. So to do that, we can use a recursive algorithm structure where we run the same max depth algorithm on a smaller part of the tree and then eventually we'll get down to some base case where there is no tree left and then it will return back that part of the tree and build back up the solution. So basically we're going to start off 
by running our max depth on the root node. And we're going to say, okay, well, that's depth one, but we don't know the rest. So then we're going to have to check the max depth of the two children. And then, well, we don't know what the max depth of that is without checking the bottom. So we're going to say the max depth of these two and then the max depth of those children. And then eventually we'll reach a spot where there aren't any children left. And then this will report back up what its depth was, which was adding one level. And then once that knows there's one level below it, well, that will be two and it will report up two here. And now it says, OK, that's two depth and I have one depth. So that's three for me. I'll report three back up to the top. So at the end, that should allow us to accumulate and build up the maximum depth of the entire tree, which in this case would be, well, one plus three equals four. So let's drop back to the code editor now and see how we could go about coding up this solution. We are given a class of tree node that has three attributes, the value of the node itself, and then a left and right, which are the children of the node. And if it has no children, these would be left blank and be none. So we're given a root node to start with, and we need to find the max depth returned as an integer. So in our draw up, we saw that if we're at an empty node, the it doesn't add anything to the maximum depth. So if we're given a root node, for instance, that has nothing in it, then our depth is just zero. So we need to check for that eventuality. So we'll, we'll say if not root, which means if the root is empty, we just return zero. And if the root is not empty, well, we need to add one then for the level that we're currently at, the root node. So one plus the maximum depth of the two children branches. So we want the max of the two children. Well, what's the max of the maximum depth of the two children? That's just rerunning max depth self dot max depth twice one on each of the children. So the child, the children of root are root dot left and root dot right. So this recursive call will basically say if, if we're empty, we just return zero. If we're not empty, we'll add one for this level and then add to that the maximum depth of my two children. And this will go into the next level and say for the left root node, we'll add one for that level and then get the maximum of its children. And the same thing for the right. And it will drill all the way down to the bottom of the tree. And once it gets to where there aren't any more children left and they're, they're empty nodes, well, then it will just return zero. That won't add anything. And that will eventually get to the bottom and accumulate up plus one for every level of the tree. So even though this isn't a whole lot of code, this recursive function call here should actually solve this problem and build up the end solution here. So I'm going to go ahead and click submit on that and we'll see what we get for our runtime if we didn't make any mistakes. So we got a runtime of 64 milliseconds, faster than 25% of Python 3 submissions. So it didn't seem particularly fast, although this site does have a bit of variability from, from one run to the next. So this could be a case where essentially everyone is probably doing something similar to this. So if you kind of just get a bad run on the CPU of the servers you're running on, you can sometimes get what seems to be slower than average scores. If we run this again, I bet would, we would get something actually faster than that. So let's see what happens if we rerun it. So you see that time we had 40 milliseconds faster than 85%. So this is probably just a case where everyone is kind of coming up with a solution that's about this same runtime. And, but this seemed like potentially the easiest way to do this, even though it was using recursion, which is sometimes a little bit hard to understand or wrap your mind around exactly how the recursion is working. But in some circumstances, a recursive function like this actually is substantially easier than it would be to try to do something like this without using recursion. So I hope you found this explanation to be useful. Thanks for watching and keep coding.